So back in 2013, I'm living in East Nashville, and I get this call late at night, and it's answer the phone and said, hey, it's Todd Snyder. And I said, hey, Todd, how you doing? And he's like, man, I really like your podcast, and I want to be on it. And I said, I'd love to have you on. That'd be beautiful, Todd. How about next Tuesday, maybe next Wednesday? And he says, no, man, I want to do it right now. And I said, it's kind of late at night, man. I think it was like a Tuesday night. And he's like, no, I want to do it right now. And I said, all right, man, well, come on over. He shows up. He comes with his buddy, Brian, who drove him over. It's past midnight, and Todd had been doing mushrooms and ecstasy for the last two days, and he said he hadn't slept. And, man, he was feeling no pain, and he was in top form. We sat down and recorded it and had one of the stranger evenings that I'd ever had. It was a true East Nashville experience. Todd Snyder tripping balls on your couch. That's about as East Nashville as it gets. This is a small part of a much bigger interview, and I'll link to the rest of that interview down below, but it's one of the more popular episodes of my podcast, and it was a very fun evening. My roommates Frankie and Malcolm will probably make an appearance somewhere in there. They love hearing Todd Snyder tell stories, and this is a good one. Todd talks about his love of John Prine, amongst other things. I have a few things I want to say on the other side of the interview, so stick around and I'll catch you on the other side. But imagine we're sitting on my couch in East Nashville listening to stories from Todd Snyder. Uh, I forget what was the question, man. I mean, because I'm mushrooms I like and ecstasy I've done, been doing all day. Today. I'm fucked up now. You wouldn't believe what your house looks like to me, man. <laughs> I'm tri I'm serious. I've been tripping balls for two days. Would you like to describe my house, uh, what it looks well, like to you right now? These bats that are hovering over the top of me are uh, conspicuous. Is that, uh, what does that mean? What does that word mean? No, I was, it's normal, I guess. Everything's kind of tracking around. I've really been getting into shrooms lately because I don't drink anymore. And then I met Chris Robinson from the Black Crows, and he was he had just done this great show with his own band, and I was so starstruck to talk to him, you know. And then I asked, you know, we the talk went to drugs pretty quick. And and I I, I we were talking about the drugs we still did, you know. And he said he still shroomed, and I said, when, you know, he said just before the gig and I'd done that a few times but I never concerted it as like a something to do every night or day you know like pot and that's the way he's working it so lately I've been going that route that's about it although somebody gave me some MD MA is that what I had to, like I've had a bunch of that today and a bunch of uh, what is that today ecstasy okay man i just got home from a long trip but look man do i look like i'm about to drive a car into anybody shit no i've been home listening to humble pie and making up songs <laughs> <laughs> you ain't hurting nobody i ain't hurting nobody my best john prine story that i i've uh, i got i think and it's the most telling when people ask me what he's like um uh, I tell this story, and that is, I did a tour of Europe with him. I can't remember what year it was, but uh, it was a long, you know, eight hour flight. And then we got off the plane, and somebody, they sent somebody with a, a van to pick us up. And uh, Jake's and, and Wilbur and myself, and Mitchell, it was a bit small entourage, like six people. And um, we get into the car, and it's this 25, 28 year old kid kind of cocky, I think, or, you know, a little, a little excitable. Didn't seem to really uh, know who John was either, you know, or and to my liking anyway, because I'm kind of a John snob. And um, anyway, to make a short story long, this guy fucking starts barreling down the highway and Prine says, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going the wrong way. And the kid says, no, no, it's this way. And all of us were like, hmm. But as soon as he did, John went, oh, all right. And he opened up the newspaper. And like an hour later, 
that kid said, oh, shit, you were right. And we had just flown fucking forever. And now we're going to turn around and drive another hour after having driven an hour. And you could feel the fumes coming off the entire entourage, at least in my stoner brain. I was like, well, you can almost see the steam rising in this room. And and again, this might have just been my perspective, but John John didn't look up from his paper, man. And I don't. I and, and at first I thought to myself, you know, you you just can't knock this guy off his square. But the more I thought about it, it's deeper than that. It's like he doesn't have a square, you know. And uh, uh, it's hard to describe. Um, him, him, because I think he's a very special, kind of a touched by lightning type person. I wanted to try to be like him, and uh, learned in the two weeks, first two weeks of knowing him, that no one was ever going to be like him. You know? But yeah, like it just he just didn't he didn't raise his voice, he didn't get ruffled, he didn't even breathe a weird sigh of weird anything. He just flipped the page of his paper and said to the kid, "That's cool." And I know. He wasn't holding it back. I'm certain from what I know about him that in his brain, he wasn't at that time saying, calm down, John. It's all right. You know, be cool to this kid. Have compassion. He just was doing that. That's my estimation. It's just who he is. He was reading the paper, you know, and the kid was, I fucked up. Yeah, we all fucked up. Eh, Yankees, don't you? You know, and I was, we were pretty tired and beat up and, and uh, I'm sure that Dave Jakes and Steve Wilbur would tell you too that we were all kind of waiting for somebody to give the kid the old I told you so or do you fuck, you know. It, but it wouldn't have been right, you know. It's just, it's uh, it's amazing to see. It, uh, well, it wouldn't have been right. Lots of people would have at least snapped a little. Most of the people I opened for would have had no problem uh, being a tool to that guy. Yeah, I I like to think I'm nice to people. John's an exceptionally uh, kind guy. He, he's in my opinion, he's grateful for. He's he has a grateful heart. He doesn't he's not threatened by people. He's been good to me. He was very good to me for a long time. And then I had to leave. You know, I was with his company but then i got i i couldn't not leave at a certain point and uh i think he understood but i still every time i'm around him now i'm like ah sorry but i had to do it i would i would you know i would have been a fool not to do it so anyway what were we talking about we we're talking about the wedding and i oh yeah and then uh, oh guy clark's story no that's my guy clark's story <laughs> no uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I'm not a diverger. <laughs> um, so uh, that was just, I just saw him a couple of weeks ago at, at a thing. And he was like, are those flowers on your hat? Like in a, in like a condescending kind of way. And I said, yeah. And he said, why? <laughs> and one time I went over to his house and uh, played him a song. And he just was like, I don't get that one. I just don't get that one. It's like, oh god, god damn! Can I lay down for a minute? Can't we? I thought we were just gonna be polite, you know. But that generation wasn't polite. They were really honest with each other. When I was a young guy, I made up seventeen songs and I gave them to John Prine and his manager, and they came back and told me there was one in there. Yeah, I threw out sixteen songs over however many it was. It started over. One time, uh, Keith Sykes took me to, when I, before I made an album, he took me to this thing called the Whole Damn Family Band. And it was a uh, guy and Towns and John and Nancy. And I was just shocked because it was a surprise. He was surprising me. I didn't know that's what that band was. It was like a little bar. And it, uh, it was interesting because they were, um, they were all getting fucked up in the, back room and shooting dice all the singers were nancy too like a fucking sailor and um towns was kind of 
Mountain Down. I don't even know what Stormy Tillman told me. This is one of my other Guy Clark stories. Huh? Uh, and then afterwards, I got to go, me and Keith Sykes, Towns Van Zandt, and Guy Clark, and John Bryan, and some chick dressed as Santa Claus. Uh, went to John Prine's house. And you ever see that movie where they got that kid spider that gets shot in the foot because he fucks up the drinks? Yeah. The mob thing. I was like the kid. I was like the I, I made drinks and they traded songs. That's probably my best Guy Clark story. That I just got, I got to sit in Prine's kitchen and they were drunk. So they like, when they, when one would hand the guitar to the other. They'd look at me and go, what do you want to hear now? You know? And I thought, I must, I, I must have done something good in my other life. That was it. But then Keith said, play him one of your songs. And uh, I played a song. I, took the, I put a capo on the second fret, and I played my song for those guys. I was about 24. And when it got over, Guy Clark said, there was a pause, and then Guy Clark said, you didn't have to use a capo on that. You probably just could have done that in D. <laughs> <laughs> Never sang that song again. <laughs> I won't even tell you what it was. Two songs he's fucking knocked out of my fucking skull. But, you know, I still play the one that he didn't get. It's people yell for it, but I think that he's, you know, I, I, li I like him. Um, you know, I come from that school, and he agrees. We talked about it. I said, you know, uh, after the wave of great rock from Elvis to Stones, Beatles, some people want to go all the way to Kurt Cobain, but I'd probably end it pretty quick, Dylan, you know. And then there was the, the little wake that went over into country music when you had Waylon and Willie and Guy Clark and Billy Joe Shaver. Or are this shit that we do, you know. There was a time in this country's history where the finest minds of the time wanted to be what we are. You know, we're not that. I'm not. You might be. But, uh, you know, this, the people that are, were going to come along behind Guy Clark and be as good as Guy Clark are doing computer shit. Sorry. You're left with us, bud. <laughs> yeah. And we're doing the best we can. So that is Todd Snyder sitting on my couch in East Nashville, Tennessee. That was a very fun, strange evening, and I don't think I will forget that anytime soon. I'm glad you guys could share some of it. Down below is a link to the rest of that interview if you want to check it out. But, you know, Todd has a gift for making people smile and laugh. And it's about as good a, it's as nice a thing as you can do for someone. If you can make them laugh, that's a, it takes a lot of weight off and we can all stand that in these days. But be sure to subscribe. If you like, comment, you know, and share this. It helps me out and more people will find out about this and I'll keep uploading things like this. And uh, for those of you who've been hitting that tip jar, man, I really appreciate it. And also be sure and hit the bell next to the subscription and you'll be notified as soon as a new episode comes out. And I'll keep sharing these stories if you guys keep enjoying it. Take care of each other and I'll check you next time. <laughs>